Break I've down. never run out of gas in my life. You don't want to do it today? Not really. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's episode of The Thrifty Three. And if you're a keen observer, you'll note that that is not a Tesla behind me, but in fact, a Chrysler Pacifica hybrid. Yep, it was three months ago that we had an unfortunate accident with the Tesla and it's still in the shop. So today, we're gonna be looking at that minivan. Now, before you click out of here, keep in mind that is a hybrid and it can go on all electric. But better yet, we are here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming and we're driving all the way back to our offices in Boulder, Colorado, which is exactly 523 miles from here. Now that, because it is an electric hybrid, has a range of 520. So the question is, will we make it? And my lovely wife who is behind the camera is biting her teeth because she's really worried that we won't make it on one gas tank. So let's hit the road and see if we can make it all the way back to Boulder without refueling. Nervous? Um, About making it? I'm a little nervous. It's only 92%. Yeah. Well, that's just a battery. I know, but we need 100% to make it. <laughs> well, it is what it is. We've been shooting the car. That's part of video production. Let's go. So let's talk about fuel economy. Now the EPA says that this minivan gets 82 MPG when you're rolling on electricity and gasoline, or 30 MPG when you're just rolling on gasoline. So we're gonna do our traditional MPG test. So that means we're gonna make sure this is filled up at the gas station, wait 30 seconds, fill it up again, and then we're gonna get on the road to Boulder and see if we can make it all the way home on one tank full. So you've owned it now for about 10 months and let's talk about kind of that ownership experience. So uh, kind of walk me through some of the issues that you've had and how they were resolved. Even small issues kind of blow up into big ones with Tesla. Yeah. Like I lost a lug nut like a month and a half ago. Yeah. And it took about a month to get a replacement in. All right, so we're gonna fill it up, wait 30 seconds, make sure we're completely full. Let's see how much gas it takes. See, it's taking gas. 0.26 <laughs> of a gallon, now we wait 30 seconds. And of course, I've reset the odometer so that, actually I'll reset it again when we get in there just to be on the safe side. I'll reset it one more time so that when we fill it up again, we'll divide the uh, number of gallons by, actually the number of miles by the number of gallons to get us a precise fuel economy number. Not yet 30 seconds. All right, here we go. You know, that 0.388 of a gallon barb could mean the difference between being stranded on the side of the road and making it to our offices in Boulder, you know that. I'm not being stranded at the side of the road. I will jump out in Fort Collins and call Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, yeah. We might be calling Tommy. Uh, we got the Pringles. Road trip food. Road trip food. This thing makes an interesting noise. Let me have you listen to it when it's running all electric. It says we've got uh, 521 miles. That says we've got 522 miles. Turn right on Ms. Wilson Road. About. So it should be interesting. Now you can of course get much further than that by driving efficiently. So you want to have to do that? Yeah. Don't accelerate so hard. Okay. Yeah, you're just going to burn battery. Mm -hmm. The other thing you don't want to do is exceed 100 miles an hour. I'll try my best. Because that's. Uh, Continue straight for eight minutes to Wyoming 22. That's as fast as this will go. It's governed at 104 miles an hour, and I did do some research. Uh, zero to 60, let me look it up according to car and driver, in case you guys are wondering, is, um, let's see here, zero to 60 according to car and driver, is 7.4 seconds and a top speed of 104. It's showing you where the power's coming from. Now, all of our power is going from the battery to the front wheels at this point, so you're really using no fuel at all. And there is a setting here where you can actually uh, click over the transmission into low gear and that basically works like a much higher region if you're going down a steep mountain pass So let me put it in there for you. So now let off the gas. You see how much it's regening? Yeah That's more efficient. It feels like it's holding me back. It's almost breaking. Yeah, but that yeah. means it's actually Regenerating more power right now. You're running at 83.8 mpg bar That's pretty darn good. 
So you've got 26 miles of range left on your battery before the engine kicks in. For all you electric car fans, this is the only electric minivan you can buy. That's right, it's got a 16 kilowatt battery which gives it a range of about 32 miles of pure electric motion. The Toyota Sienna, the Honda Odyssey, nor the Kia have any electric power whatsoever. And keep this in mind, even though this starts at about $39,000 and this one is a whopping $50,000, it can be cheaper than the non-hybrid. That's because if you're from a place like Colorado, you get a 7500 federal tax rebate and a $5,000 Colorado rebate, which makes it a $12,500 rebate, which makes this car cheaper than the non-hybrid. So when you're negative, that means you're regenerating power. When you're positive, it means you're using power. So, so far we've gone uh, 17 miles, 17.3 miles on the battery, and we're almost half empty. We're at 52% of the battery left. If you double that, you get what, 34, which is about right, which is what FCA says you're gonna get about 32 on the battery. Seven percent, Barb. How far have we gone? How many 30, miles? 32 and a half miles. All right, so we're about to run out of battery. What I'm looking forward to is this, right? This is gonna change from the battery to the engine turning on. So it's gonna go from that being colorful, I think, to that lighting up. Less than 1%. And there it goes. Turn blue, Barb. I think that's the engine running. Okay, so we got 34 and a half miles on the battery. We are now running on traditional dead dinosaurs. <laughs> and uh, of course, we're still having the uh, electric motor help us out because when we go down hills, we regen and then it still provides power when we... Uh... Does that work if I have the cruise control on though? Sure, I wouldn't, yeah. I'm not sure if, that's a good question. I'm not sure if cruise control is more efficient than not. I'm suspecting it's not, but it might be uh, another video that we could do at some point. That'd be kind of cool to see if actually cruise control is. Uh, and in the Tesla, if we ever get it back, we might try autopilot and see if that is actually efficient, or at least more efficient than just driving it ourselves. Under the hood is a 3.6 liter Atkinson Cycle V6 that puts out, well, about 260 horsepower when combined with the two electric motors. Now the electric motors put out about 120 horsepower, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's certainly enough to get you those 32 miles of range. It is also paired to a, of course, CVT transmission for the best fuel economy. Now this hybrid weighs about 500 pounds more than the regular Pacifica. And that's of course a good and a bad thing. It's bad because added weight means worse fuel economy. It's good because it lowers the center of gravity and actually makes it drive a little better. It's also bad because of one thing in the back that this one can't do that the regular one can do. Let me show you. And that is this really cool key. It's probably the most interesting FCA key that you can ever get besides of course the red Hellcat key which unlocks 707 horsepower. But Forget about that. This one does a whole bunch of cool stuff. Not only does it lock and unlock the vehicle, but you can also open the tailgate. You can also remotely start it. And best of all, you can open both side doors, but you don't need to use this key to open the side door because now you can do this. There we go. Look at that. If you've got your hands full of babies or groceries, no need to even get out the key. It was 35 years ago that Chrysler invented the minivan and they've been pushing the tech ever since. For instance, Chrysler is the only manufacturer with stow and go seating. But because this is a hybrid, the battery lives right under there. So while you can stow and go the third row, the second row only pops out the traditional way. And believe me, it's not easy. These seats weigh 66 pounds. And so it's a little bit of a, well, it's a little bit of a compromise. The other compromise that you get is you can only get this minivan in the two plus two plus three configuration. That's right, it's only a seven passenger minivan. Once again, batteries, you can't get enough payload for actually eight person seating. So if you need the eight person minivan, you're gonna have to go with the traditional non-hybrid. We're stopping for the first time after driving, what, two hours and 35 minutes? 150 miles. Yeah, what does it say, how much range do we have? Um, we have 395. 395, huh? 
let's see what the distance is. Look at Google Maps, and Google Maps says 346. Oh, so it's we're looking good. We're looking good, huh? That should be okay. We're getting 37.2, uh, but that's going down. Yeah, but guys, a lot of bug carnage on the front of the Pacifica. Here, I guess we're by Eden, Wyoming. We've been actually driving pretty quickly. I want to say uh, probably the road is 70. We've been doing like 72, maybe a little bit over the speed limit. So we haven't been hypermiling. We haven't been doing anything that's uh, you know not normal that you guys wouldn't do. The great thing about minivans is they're so darn useful. All right, except for the fact that this is front wheel drive. But besides that, it's so easy to load things and people into a minivan. Let me show you. If you want to get in the back seat, you can do it two ways. First, you can of course pull this handle and move the seat forward and you've got you know a pretty easy way to get in and out of it especially if you're not as uh, well let's say tall as I am but you can also do it this way you can go through the middle and there's a little thoughtful button here that helps and watch what happens when I push it watch this look at that it moves the front row out of the way so that if you're uh, yeah like I said tall like me you can just walk in here and then of course go right through the center to get into the back seat. There's some really thoughtful features built into the Pacifica. For instance, you've got a massive sunroof that lets sunlight in for the first two rows and I've got my own sunroof here. I also have my little sunshade. I've got my own personal USB port. But as you know, today the crossovers that have four wheel drive are much more prevalent and much more popular. So like the Kia Telluride, the new upcoming Ford Explorer. Those are the ones that most people want, but there is a price to be paid when you're in the third row of one of those crossovers, and that is because they're much taller, you basically sit with your knees in your face if you're an adult. The second row is also incredibly comfortable. I've got the seat all the way back, and yet look at this, I've got plenty of knee room. I can slide the seat forward and backward. Now, unlike some of the competitors, I can slide it left to right, but there are some compromises. You also have some very thoughtful features like three zone climate control. So right here I can control the climate back here. And of course, if you've got the kiddos, you gotta have not one, but two screens. So if you're on a road trip like we are, plenty of entertainment. I guess I, I think in some ways, if you don't have to go off road, the minivan is a perfect road trip car. You could sleep in this thing if you had to. Oh, for sure. It wouldn't be that hard. So let's talk about storage space because minivans are really about utility, right? These are family haulers and you want to have a lot of places to put stuff. And this minivan has probably got the most storage spaces I've seen of any vehicle. Obviously, first and foremost, you've got your traditional glove box. The bear spray fits. That's good. It's a little on the small side, but it's not that bad. Then let's say you want to put it into the cup holder. You can put it there. There's also a small little cubby hole right here. Uh, the bear spray does not fit, but that's not a big deal because there's a little storage hole right here, good for maps. Oh, you can kind of hold the bear spray. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't you just put it in this compartment right there, which is also a good place to hold stuff. But there's more. Check this out. An entire deep compartment with coin slots hidden right there. Look at that. And let's say you've got your phone you don't know where to put it, look at that. A convenient little space right underneath here where you can not only store it, but you could easily charge it using a USB port. Let's count cup holders. So I've got one, two here. That doesn't seem like a lot. They fit the bear spray, but then in the door, you've got three. There's another one over there, that's four. Let's see how many are in the next row. Now there's another cup holder, five. Of course, there's another one on that side. And most interestingly, when you get back here, so you're at six, seven, eight, and then for some odd reason, there's only one back here. So nine cup holders, but more storage space. Check this out. I told you there was more. Look at that. Another cubby plus one, two more. So a total of 11 cup holders for a van that seats seven people. That's probably, uh, what, two? giant gulps per person and you still could probably fit more stuff in here. Now we were listening to a radio show, you know, one of those kind of morning zoo shows and they were talking about what people's favorite 
road trip foods are, and I guessed it was beef jerky, and I was wrong. And I want to know in the comments below if you think that this was one of the top road trip foods. What was it? There was a tie between Twizzlers and Red Vines. I've never had a Twizzler or a Red Vine on a road trip in my life, and yet this is one of the top three most popular. Well, they're easy to eat. Yeah. They don't make a mess. But I have done chips, I have done candy bars, of course, I've done M&M's, and I've never done carrot sticks or celery sticks. Let us know what your favorite road trip food is in the comments below, and we'll do an informal poll and see if uh, red vines or twizzlers are actually a thing. Now the great thing about minivans is, once again, utility. And if you can see right here, I've got two airplane bags in the back of the Pacifica. And you could probably get probably three and a half bag here. But the best part is, because this is an American full-size minivan, you can actually get a piece of plywood in here, which you can't do in vans like the European-based Ford Transit Connect. But remember the stow-and-go seating? This is where it gets really cool. Look at this. If you did want to put a lot more stuff in here all you do is pull this look at that one smooth action did you get that let me show you again pull number one and look at all the room you have there plus you have seating for four and enough for well a family of I don't know circus performers there's so much room back here it's incredible oh look the Tesla Model 3 just like ours <laughs> Except running. Except not in the shop. It's broken. <laughs> of course, if we do run, run out of gasoline, it's pretty easy to fill up again. If this were a pure electric, we'd have a much more nail-biting worry, but we don't. So, Yeah, we're passing a bunch of Tesla Model 3s going to some Tesla store. When I see new ones that are on the truck, yeah, we can't get parts for ours. I wonder if Tesla cares more about their possible customers and their current customers. Of course yes. they care more about their new customers. Than the current customers? Well, sure. It's always trouble, though. Because current customers are people who have already invested in the company and might invest in another vehicle. And you kind of feel like, you know, if this company doesn't care about me, why should I buy the next one? It's true. The charger lives right here. And if you're thinking about charging it up at home, not hard to do. Regular wall plug, of course the standard minivan plug, at least the FCA minivan plug, takes about 12 to 14 hours if you plug it into the wall to get a complete charge. Now at 32 miles of all electric range, that's probably enough where you could drive it to work, plug it in, work all day and drive it home without ever touching the uh, gasoline engine. We're rolling on Yokohama 17s, but 18s are optional. Now, of course, this is the one downside to a minivan. It's front wheel drive. It doesn't have all wheel drive. But if you want to be cool in your minivan, there is a murdered out version, you know, monochromatic, let's say all black that you can now get in the Pacifica. There's also a 35th anniversary, which has cool stitching. Or there's this one in this beautiful ocean blue. So we've been on the road now for four hours and we're about halfway, 261 miles. And we were doing good with the range. Right now we're at 284, but once we got an I-80, uh, I set the cruise to 80 miles an hour, which is what the speed limit is here. And boy, do you burn fuel. Barb, go check on the phone, see how much, uh, see how much more we have to go. 234. 234 and the rain says 282 but at 80 miles an hour we're burning a lot of fuel. The fuel gate says we're still over half but that might not mean anything because you know how this goes right sometimes when you get to half the second half was a lot faster than the first half so uh, we shall see but right now I'm not optimistic that we're not going to get home. I think we're going to have to well, hopefully. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, but at 80 miles an hour, what, 200 miles to 80 miles an hour is certainly going to burn a lot of fuel. Well, there ain't much here in Rollins, except for McDonald's. So we just had McDonald's, and uh, we're about uh, halfway on the gas tank. We've gone, uh, I don't know, almost 300 miles, but at 80 
miles an hour, we're really burning gas fast, so I'm a little concerned. I mean, if we were going 65, we could probably eke out that fuel economy, but at 80, I don't know. When we were uh, getting on the highway, I thought we got this, and now I'm not so sure. Especially when you get toward the end, right? The light's gonna come on, break I've down. I've never run out of gas in my life. You don't wanna do it today? Not really. Well, you know, according to this, we got 30 miles of despair. But um, I'm looking at that gas gauge, and it's getting toward the red there, isn't it? Uh, we're coming up on quarter tank left. So we're in Colorado on the home stretch. Now we can open this up, let some light in here. We've been driving for almost seven hours. 83.7 on electric, according to the car. 374 on gas for combined 458. And somehow Barb, you managed to actually increase the range coming in from Wyoming. So now we're up to 111 miles left. All right, so we are almost at my office. And uh, I forgot my keys. Did. Yeah. But well, that, it doesn't matter. We can just go to the uh, gas station because really there's nothing to be done at the office. really close to your office. It's like a block away, right? Yeah, it's next to my office. There are the final numbers. As you can see, we've gone uh, 497.7 miles. Can you remember that? 497.7. Yep. That's what we're going to use to divide. Yep. Uh, and uh, car sits 34.1 mpg with a range of 55 so basically 550 miles of range if you believe what this display says which is pretty phenomenal how many gallon tank does it have 16.5 mm -hmm. look at all these bugs we killed good golly look at that uh, this was a perfectly clean car when we left Jackson Hole. Okay. All right, now we wait 30 seconds. So, so far we've got 14.74. Got my watch running. There we go, 497.7 divided by 14.660 equals there you go, look at that, 33.94. So it's pretty much right on. Yeah, so there you go. Both the car and the calculator pretty much agree. About 34 miles to the gallon, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Guys, come back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, there you have it. Tesla, that's right, Tesla Model 3 Thrifty 3 reviews. And we'll do another EV video next week, same time, same place, same station. And uh, it probably won't be a Tesla again because we're still waiting for it to get fixed. See you guys next time. Ciao.